la 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 
la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you once more for this privilege and the grace given unto us, Father. Lord, to be minister of your gospel, your word, Father, unto the whole world. And we thank you, Father, for the unction and your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the utterance of your word. We thank you, Lord, for the knowledge. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for understanding. We thank you, Father, for giving us the tongue of the learned, and you teach us daily the right word to say at the right time. We glorify your name, for you are Lord that changeth not. Thank you, Father, for the transformation of our lives and many more lives, Father, that will hear us. We glorify your name for you are God, King, and Savior. Lord, we come against every spirit that hates your word and the spreading of your word. Those spirits that the Bible calls anti antichrist and the enemies of the cross, we come against you in the name of Jesus. We send the angels of God to come against you, overtake arrest. And destroy you in the name of Jesus, Nazareth, Lord. Amen. Lord, we believe you are in the temple. For the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in their midst. Father, let your presence fill this place. And every soul that is here today, in the name of Jesus, Nazareth, Lord. Amen. And I pray for all those who are listening to me from their houses. Holy Spirit of God, reach and fill them. Touch them, Lord, and begin to do miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Amen. Father, I pray that you open the eyes of, of their understanding, that they may know that which you have for them today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Ask somebody next to you, say, who is your head? 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 This is one of the message messages that I call message because it is given by the Lord. This is what I, it was. It was like a word. It, it's not a dream. Like I was hearing something in the dream, and I woke up with it. Then when I, when I woke up, the Holy Spirit continued to speak regarding this topic. And that is why I believe God has this for us today. As we always, I am a messenger. My job is to take message from the owner of the ministry, the, 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 the Father, the God, and our Savior, and to speak to the church, and to myself, and to many of those who will believe. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 12 to 27. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 27. First Corinthians 12, 12 to 27. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being made many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in, the, for in fact, the body is, one, is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the air should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot see to the hand. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor say to the head to the not say not again the head to the feet. The feet. I have no need of you. No much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable on these we bestow greater honor. And our and our unpresentable unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no modesty, no no need. But God composed the body, having great, given greater honor to the parts which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and the members indiv individually. 
Let us read verse 27 together. One to everybody. First Corinthians 12, 27. One to go. You, you are the body, body of Christ, Christ and members individually. You are what? You are the body of Christ, members individually. You are what? You are the body of Christ, members individually. Tell somebody beside you, say, you are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. Members individually. So Christ is the head, and we are what? The body. Christ is the head, and we are what? The body. The body. But the message the Lord wants me to ask everyone listening to me today is who is your head? Ask somebody, who is your head? If Christ is the head, then we are supposed to be what? The body. And if you have a body, then you must have what? The head. But today, the word that was given unto me to speak to you. This is not a message that I composed by myself. It was a word that was given to me to speak and to ask every church and every member, who is your head? Your head determines what your body does. And you will understand it as I continue. I will speak and at the end I will ask the same, the same question again. After the message I will ask you again, who is your head? The Holy Spirit woke me up this in very early in the morning today. Even though I slept late, I still woke up after speaking for a, a, a couple of hours. Then I sat that this word woke me from the sleep. So I sat down and the Holy Spirit, a word that woke me from the sleep and it was being spoken to me again when I woke up and I, I sat down. According to my custom, I always pray to God to give me a message for every day. To give me a message for every day. And that is the message for you today. I, I am saying this not for you to see me as a prophet, but for you to take it seriously. You understand that? It is for you to take it what? Seriously. It's not for you to respect that I see vision or revelation. It's for you to do what? To take it seriously. Now, in human body, in human body, as you can see me here as a human being, you see that I have a head. I have my head. I have my eyes and the socket of my eyes into my head. I have my nose in my head. I have my ears, two ears in what? Fixed on both corners of my head. I have my mouth also in my head. You see, I have every important thing on my what? Inside my head. My eyes, my nose, my mouth, my tongue, my ears. Above all, I have all my senses. My what? My five senses inside what? My head. The first sense, the sense to, the sense to see, the sense to hear, the sense to feel, the sense to taste, and the third sense to smell. Everything in my, in my brain, in my head, inside my head. So inside my head, there is what? A hearing. There is what? Smelling that brings respiration to my body inside my head. I have my mouth that can communicate and express my feeling. Whatever my body feels, my mouth can say to somebody that this is what I feel. So that they will be able to know what I'm going through. My tongue can speak, it can help the roofs of my mouth to speak out, to utter word out inside my head. So every of those things I've told you now is inside the head. So the question is that, is your head important to your body or not? So when the head is cut off, what remains of the body? The body is dead. Now they can cut a finger or a leg or a feet or a toe. The person might still live, isn't it? Yes. But when they cut the head, nobody lives after cutting the head. No one lives after what? The head is chopped off. Then the body is dead. So the question again is, who is your head? Now from this, the title of the message through the help of the Holy Spirit is what? 
headless bodies. The bodies that do not have head. We call it belly of Christ, but Christ is not their heads. You will hear the reason why that God wants us to know today. But there is a solution. For every message the Lord has given to speak to his people, he has a solution. That is why he gave it us as a message. Because the message of God is what? Is for correction, for reproof, for direction. That we may be able to be complete and totally equipped for what? For every good works. It's not to condemn. The message of God is not to condemn. It's to tell us our, our problems that we may be able to what? To change. Condemnation is when you don't, we can't change and you are just, you are condemned to be punished. But God's message is a message given to us for us to check our lives and to change the error. So the title again is what? Headless, Headless body. A body without head. A body without direction. A body that is lost. A wayward and reckless body. A living body that has no head. In the book of 1 Corinthians that our brother read to us from verses 12 to 27, we saw there that God, the head of Christ, and Christ, the head of the church, you see, and so on and so forth. But what we want to get from there is verse 27, that we are what? You are the body of Christ. And Christ is what? Your head, if you are the body. Christ is your head. I told us shortly that when you cut off body, I mean, when you cut off the head from the body, the body becomes what? Dead. Because everything that makes the body live is a what? It's in the head. Your senses will pass information to your body. And your, the good thing I like, the cooperation I've seen about human part, human body is that they cooperate effortlessly. They don't need to struggle to submit. Look at this right hand. The right hand is submissive to the mind. As soon as you feel any inch in your, this, this hand of the hand, from your brain, the inch, the, the, the inch will pass what? The information to your, your sense, and you feel. Then this hand goes to this hand to help this hand. You see that? Now, he is not the one, this hand is not the one that is feeling inch, that is inchy, but he goes here to do what? To, look at my sister there. You see what she did? Now, she feels something on the armpit, on the left. She felt something on the left, then she used the right to do what? Why don't you use your right to, to do the right? So that the, your right will say, no, I don't like you. You offended me in the left. You see that? So if something will happen to your leg and your feet will go there, you do like this, to help your, your feet. You see that? Something happens to your head, inchy, then you put your finger to help the, the head. So they cooperate, they work together. They submit effortlessly. They do what? Submit effortlessly. They don't struggle to submit. Your hand does not struggle to submit to your brain. Your feet does not struggle to submit to your brain. So therefore, there is need for you to have a head in order to make that cooperation work smoothly. So therefore, are you a body with head or a body without head? You will answer the question, like I said, at the end of the message. In the book of John, chapter 15, 4 to 10. John 15, 4 to 10. John 15, 4 to 10. Yes. Abide in me, and I in you. Listen to that very well. He said, you must abide in me, and I will abide in you. And the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. He says, the branch cannot do what? Bear fruit of itself. The branch cannot bear its own fruit by himself, yes? Unless it abides in the vine. Unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you. Neither in you. Unless you abide in me. Yes. I am the vine. I am the vine. You are the branches. You are the branches. He who abides in me. He who abides in me. And I in him. I in him. Bears much fruit. It bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Without me you can what? Do nothing. You can do nothing without me. If anyone does not abide in me, if anyone does not abide in the body, I am the head. I am your head. If you if you are claiming that you don't want to walk with me, you don't want to cooperate with me, you cannot follow my instruction, you cannot follow my guidance, you are what? 
you cannot bear any fruit. Yes? He is cast out as a branch. Yes. And is withered. Uh huh. And they gather them. Look, look at that. If the ant says, I will not walk with the brain, this ant, if it says it will not walk with the brain, then the brain will not send the blood to it. And if the blood, because the blood, when it comes from your, your, the fans in the heart, it goes to the brain, the brain sends it to every part, body cell that will begin to make the body part move. So if the hand said, No, I shot you out of the body, I don't want your cooperation, then what happened to the hand? It gets stiffened. Because it doesn't want to cooperate. So that's what Jesus is saying here. If you say you cannot cooperate with me, the head, because your head is your, is your engine room of the whole body. It's what? It's the engine room of the whole body. It's just like when you open the bonnet of a car, you see the machine. Da, ba, bo, ba. That's the way it's in the brain. And you open the brain, you see the brain breathing. Because everything is going on inside it. Your information, your memory, the way you walk, where you started life from, what you have seen in life, your experience, the word that I'm speaking to you today, everything is what? In your head. And so if your body does not want to cooperate with the information your head is sending, then the body will what? It will be body. It will be what? Headless. You will see physical head, but it's what? Spiritually is what? Headless, Headless body. So the word of God today is that there are many children in the church today because this year is a year of restoration of hope and the glory of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit wants us to know to restore that hope and the glory. We must let the people know that there are many headless human beings in the church. They don't have Christ as their head. Unfortunately. Christ is supposed to be the head of the body of Christ. Because you and I are what? We are the body. We just saw that in the book of 1 Corinthians 12, 27. That you are what? You are the body of Christ in different parts. And Christ become what? Your head. Colossians chapter 1, 18 to 22. Colossians 1, 18 to 22. Colossians 1, Don't forget what that John said in 15. Without me, you can do what? Nothing. Anybody that does not have head is dead. So without me, you can do nothing. You can't mean you. Colossians chapter 1, 18 to 20. Yes? And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is that he? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus Christ is the head of the body. That is the church. Yes? Who is the beginning? Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things he may have the pre preeminence. That in everything, in everything in the body, that he may have what? The preeminence. The preeminence. What's the meaning of preeminence? Total control. It becomes your head. It becomes the head of the body. So that in everything it can have, is, is it one thing? No. Two things? No. Only your education? No. Only your church? No. In all things, it becomes your head so that you can have what? Total control of everything. It becomes your head so that you can have what? Total control of everything. Yes? For it, is, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself. Look at that. It says it pleases the Father. So that in him all the fullness can do what? can do it, that well. every other part of the body can submit to Christ, which is the, the head. That's the way that is pleasing to the Father. That is the way the Father has designed it, so that every body, every part of the body may submit effortlessly to the head, so that we can be complete in Him. Yes? And by Him to reconcile all things Himself. And by Him, by the head, that every part, body part, can be reconciled to himself. Just like, you know, I love the, the analogy of the Bible regarding using human being to describe the way he wants the church to be to Christ. Because he wants all the body parts to be joined together following the instruction of the head. Therefore, we can all be jointed together with Christ and unto God. Yes? Yes? By him, whether things on earth or, but, or things in heaven. Yes. Having made peace through the blood of his cross. Uh -huh. 
and you who want who want were alienated and enemies in your mind. You see that he said you who were alienated. In other words, you were formerly separated. You were formerly a headless body. Formerly a headless body. body. But what? And enemies in your mind. And you be, you were enemies of God in your mind. By wicked works. Because of your wicked works. Yet now he has reconciled. Now, how, he said, how do we know that you were alienated from God? Separated from God? That you were a woman being a body without head? Because you, were, you have some actions. Characters. That does not look like the one that comes from the head, which is Christ. Therefore, you have been brought closer to him. By the grace, yes? In the body of his flesh. Yes. Through death. Through death. To present you holy. To present you holy. And blameless. And blameless. And above reproach in his sight. And above reproach in his sight. That is the reason why God wants Jesus to be the head of the church. That he may be able to control everybody. That one body, but the church all over the world become what? One single unit. And therefore, if the whole church all over the world has Jesus as their body, are we supposed to be divided? Are we supposed to be different in preaching? Are we supposed to be different in beliefs? So, that is the message God wants me to speak to you today. I'm not expecting it to be too big or too wide. I want to maintain it to the message. Is that the body of Christ in the world do not have head. They do not have what? That is why, and when he said they don't have head, it's not that they don't really have head, but everybody have his soul. They don't have Jesus as the head. That is what I mean. When I said bodiless, I mean headless body, I am saying that the body that don't have Christ as their head. It's not that they don't have the head, but they don't have Christ as their head. Because the only recognized head is who? It's Christ. That is why I said headless bodies. I could have given it another title, but because any head that is not Christ is not what? Is not head. Any head that any church may be putting on their bodies, that any human being or any Christian may have, it is not head except Christ. Because the Bible says he is the only one that is put in the highest authority that he can become head of all things. So that in him, so that he may be able to have preeminence over every powers. Over every forces. Only one head is given to the body of Christ. Not two, not ten, not ten, not one thousand. One head and in Christ. I am going to my point and I want you to follow me stage by stage. If you miss any stage, you will not understand the message. It's a mystery. This is part of the mystery of the gospel. Which by mercy is been revealed to some of us. The Apostle Paul said that mystery that was not re revealed to the people of the past. You see, and the generation in the past. It has been made known to the generation of now. To the, to, the, to the saints now. And also gotten to the Gentiles. The mystery of the gospel. Revealed unto us. The reason why God made Christ the head. Is so that everybody. Can be joined together with him. And will live together as one unit body. In faith. In love. In belief. In understanding, in spiritual growth, that we may be able to work together up to the time we get to the full statue of Christ. Full standard of the statue of Christ. So let us begin to go. We begin to see bit by bit those that do not have head. They have physical head, but they don't have Christ as the head. Colossians chapter 2, 18 to 19. Colossians chapter 2, 18 to 19. 18 says, Let no one cheat you of your reward, to taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshy mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with with the increase that is in from that is from God. You see that? Now, when you look at verse 19, sorry, verse 18 it tells us the problem. But verse 19 tells us the reason why the problem is. Because they are able to be deceived. Because what? Because they were not, they have body, but they are not jointed with the body. 
they have been disconnected from the body. Look at it. it said, let no uh, 19 and not holding fast to the head. Some other some other translation will say disconnected from the head. They had, they were disconnected from the head, which is Christ, and therefore it was easy to deceive them. It was easy to be led astray. It was easy to be cheated, to be robbed spiritually, and to be deceived spiritually by the trickery word of deceivers of the gospel of today. Deceived by the wind of doctrine, fake doctrine, because they were disconnected from the head, which is the Christ. What translation is that? What does it say? He has lost connection with the head. You see that one? That says he had he lost connection with the head. head. Therefore, he was able to be deceived. So we are getting into those who do not have head, who do not have Christ as their head. Those who are disconnected from what? From the head. They are bodies, but the bodies have been disconnected from what? From the head. So are many people in the church today. They are the body of Christ, really. The Bible calls them so. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. But they have disconnected from the body. They are not connected to the body. And that is the reason why the church do not look like the same. That's the reason why we preach differently. That's the reason why we believe differently. That's the reason why we look differently. That's the reason why this one will say you do like this, the other one will say you do like that. That's the reason why we are not united. That's the reason why we ate and we bite and back at ourselves as church. Don't let us deceive ourselves. Churches are not united. That is the truth. And if this message is not taken seriously, if we don't go back and seek the end that we are disconnected from, there's no way the church will be united until Christ will come. And that is a dangerous, a dangerous move. Jesus died. The Father permitted the, the Son to die that we may have a head. And that all of us can be submissive to the head, that we can become one unit body. But unfortunately, many Christians are disconnected from the, from the head because we have different motives. We don't have the same motive. Now, for instance, if I have one head and my body part, can my body part begin to do contrary to my head? Whatever I think that I want to do, if I, if I feel in my mind that I want to stand up, what will my legs do? My legs will move. If I feel that I will lift up my hand this way I'm doing, I felt it in my mind, then I started my senses send it to my hand to signal to my hand, and my hand does what? It moves. So my my hands, my feet, my body, every body part that I have, they are the same unit body that formed me. Because we are one united from my, my head. So if the church of God on heart has Christ as the head, why should we believe differently? Why should we behave differently? Why should our topics and messages different from one another? Why should we fight ourselves? Why should we be this divided? The division of the body of Christ now that I see is worse than I've ever seen in my in this my little age or not. The division is, 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 is getting wider and wider and wider every day because we have lost connection with what? With the head. In the book of 1 John chapter 5, 5 verse 12, I told you that anyone that lost connection with the, with the body is what? Is dead. Anybody, body that lost connection with his head is what? Is dead. 1 John 5 12, what does it say? Anyone that has the Son has life. But he that does not have the Son of God, what? Does not have life. 
Yes, read it for me. First John five twelve. Yes. He who has the son has life. Anyone that has the head has what? Life. That is the is it is Jesus not the head? Yes. So what is saying directly there is that whoever have head has what? Life. life. Yes. Who does whoever does not have head? He who does not have the son of God does not have life. He who does not have head does not have what? Life. 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 Is dead. Because he has no more direction. I told you earlier that my eyes are in my head. So if if I don't have the head, can I see? The body has lost direction. Can I hear? Can I continue to speak? Can I continue to feel anything in my body? No. no. So you see, once you, once you don't have the head, which is the son of God, you are dead. But if you have the son of God, which is the head, you will live. But look at the deception. Listen to me. Please, I want you to give me your 100% attention in this message. It will do you a lot good. This, God may perhaps use this to change your life for good. He may give you this to change your life for good. Amen. Amen. He says, if you have the Son of God, you have aid. If you don't have him, you don't have what? You don't have it, therefore you don't have direction. So, when this was coming to me today, and I began to think, so this is the reason why we have this problem in the church. Even in one, so in one forget about the other churches, even in the same church, under one roof, we don't have the same head. In the same church, under one roof of a ministry, there are many heads there. So, in other words, there are many what? I said to you earlier that if you don't have Jesus as your head, you have what? You are headless. So I, I now begin to see the reason why there is a lot of problem. Because if you don't have Christ as your head, you will not be able to submit to Christ. That is one. And if you are not submissive to Christ, you will not be able to be holy or righteous or upright. So therefore you cannot submit to anybody. That is why you see wives don't submit to husbands. That's why you see junior people do not submit to senior. That's why you see rebellion, divorce, and problem. Because once you don't have Christ as your head and become units, one united body with Christ, you will become divided with any other relationship. You will not be able to be united with anyone. Because one unity with Christ produces other unity. Understanding that you must be united in any other process. Isaiah explained that further, I mean, very clearly in chapter 6. That once we had no head, we were living in the world. We went astray, everybody according to his own way, like a lost sheep. And everybody went in their own way. Isaiah chapter 6, from verse 8 to 11. Isaiah 6, 8 to 11, yes? Isaiah 6, 8 to 11. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Yes. Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? 8 to 11. 8 to 11. Yeah. Chapter 6. Yes. Yes. Then I said, Here, are, here am I. Send me. Oh, sorry, 53 I meant. Isaiah 53, 8 to 11. Isaiah 53, 8 to 11. Mm. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And, and who I'm will... Read it from 6 to 11. All we like... All, all we, all we, like sheep, yes, have gone astray. All of us, like sheep, have done what? Gone astray. We have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Everyone has gone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us, of us all. And the Lord laid upon him our all our iniquity, so that he can be able to what? Reconcile us back to him through what? Through his son. Remember in that Colossians chapter 2 that we read. The purpose of making Christ the head is to reconcile all the bodies everywhere, all over the world to what? To himself. Because if the head becomes one, if they have one body, one, uh, sorry, if the bodies have one head, then it will be easier to bring all the world to be called. That is what Apostle Paul called the mystery of the gospel that God put in place from the foundation of the, of the world. God had the whole world in mind then they went through Israel among the Jewish people first. 
that he may reconcile the world back to, to himself, that all will become one under the head that is called Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 8 to 11. Romans 8, 8 to 11. Romans 8, 8 to 11. Like, like I said, I am, I am letting you see bit by bit. We are going towards the main point of the message. I have been coming from establishing the point. Now you now begin to see how people can be without, without head. How they can be without head. It's not that, you see, having Christ as our head is, is one some of the technical part of the Bible that a lot of people don't take seriously. We read them in the Bible and we just, we just brush past them. You don't sit down to say, how do I become the body of the head of Christ? How do I submit myself to become the body of Christ that they call me? So it has just become a, what? a language. It's just ordinary language of the church. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. But have you ever thought, how can you be a body of the Holy Christ? How can you be the body of the Holy Christ and you are, you are what? You are dirty. Because whatever is in the brain that affects the whole body, whatever is in what? In the brain that affects the whole body. You cannot be better than what your head is. It is the head that carries your sight, your eyesight, your hearing, your, your breathing. And therefore, the head determines how your body will look like. It determines your direction. It determines your success or your failure. It determines your victory or your defeat. You see? So that is why the Bible says that Christ is our head. Because the plan for us, the plan of God for salvation is to, is to, to bring all people so the obedience of his word in one, under one Holy Spirit, under one Jesus, and under one God. And how did God have it? How, how, was, how did God plan to do that? He sent his son into the world to show us the way. And later the son went away. He sent us Holy Spirit to continue from where he stopped from. So that he can maintain his head and his preeminence in our body on daily basis through the help of the word, that Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 8 to 11. So then, those who are in Christ can, I mean, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who are in the flesh, those headless body, cannot do what? Please God. Any headless body cannot please God. Once you are not united, in the body of Christ to become to make Christ your head, you can never please God. And it is very easy. It is said in the book of Colossians in chapter 1 that we read. The symbol it said, once we were alienated, we were separated from the body, we were detached from the body, and we knew that because of the characters that we have. So when you are living in the body here, he said, When you are in the body, you are you are headless body, you can never please God. How do you know that you are a headless body? You will see that you can't please God. You will see the more you try, the more you fail. It looks like holiness is a struggle. It looks like righteousness is a struggle. In fact, sometimes you come to complain and say, you join the people that used to say, nobody can be holy. You join the group of people that said, nobody can be righteous. You cooperate with people that say, nobody can be without sin. Because you have tried, it's not working. Because you little did you know that you are ordinary headless body. Headless body. Headless body can never please God. Headless body can never do the will of God. Because once you are detached from your head, there is no connection anymore. There is no flu, flow of, wa of water no flow of blood, then that rest of the body becomes what? Dead and stiffened. Continue. Nine. Nine. But you are not in the flesh. You are not in the flesh. But in the spirit. In the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. He said, if indeed. 
indeed means if truly. If truly you have head, you are not in the flesh. If truly you have head, you are not what? Because Jesus is the head, and when he was going, he said, I will send you what? The Holy Spirit. Even though I'm not present in your body, but the Holy Spirit what? will be walking in my place. And therefore, if you are obeying the Holy Spirit, you are obeying me. You see, but here, it says if you are in the flesh, you don't have head. You don't have Christ as what? Your head. But it said if indeed you have the Spirit of God, then you have head. If indeed you have the Spirit. Yes, continue. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of God of Christ, he is not his. You see that? He said, if anyone does not have Christ as the head, that's what we mean by the Spirit of God, is not what? He is disconnected from the body. Anyone without the Spirit of God is what? Is headless body. Anyone that is not the Spirit of God is what? Headless body. Headless body. Yes? And if Christ is in you, if Christ is in you, the body is dead. The body is dead. Because of sin. And look at that. It comes now. Look at the way it starts from the Holy Spirit. He said Holy Spirit. Then he go to Christ. Which means he's speaking about the same people. Now he said, if Christ is in you. In other words, if Christ is in is your head. If Christ is what? Your head. Your head yes? The body is dead. Oh God. I hope you are seeing what I'm seeing. If you can see what I see, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, now, therefore, look at the first thing you talk about Holy Spirit. The second you talk about Jesus. He said, if Christ is your head, so if Christ is your head, so he has all the senses that control your body is in him. Then he controls your eyes. He controls your hearing. He controls your speaking, your speech. He controls whatever you have because it's your head. Then the body becomes what? Dead because of sin. Because Christ is dead to sin and therefore your bone body too, you are dead to sin. That is very simple. So if you are not dead to sin, do you have head? No. That is headless body. Ask somebody again at this junction, do you have head? Do you have head? Is Christ your head? Christ your head? You say, keep your answer to yourself. Amen. 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 You see that? Now, you see, we are getting to the point bit by bit. We are getting to the point bit by bit. Yes, read on. Ten. Ten. And if Christ is in you, if Christ is your head, the body is dead. The body is dead. Because of sin. Because of sin. But the spirit is life. The spirit is alive. Because of righteousness. Now look at that, sir. Now he said, if Christ is your head, your whole body submit to who? To him. Because see, our body parts do not struggle to cooperate with our body, with our, our head. They don't. They cooperate together. So if therefore you have Christ as your head, your body will submit to the to the what? So the Spirit of Christ. And the Spirit of Christ is what? He is the Holy Spirit. So if you are living a life that you are not submissive to the Holy Spirit, or you are not even sentimental, you don't even have any sense, you don't even feel the Holy Spirit at all, then you are headless body. You have a physical head, but there is no spiritual head. And there is the danger. We will see the danger when I get there. But for now, let's, let's show us what the situation is. Yes, continue. 11. 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Dwells in you. Dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead. He who raised Christ from the dead. Will also give life to your mortal bodies. He will also bring what? Life, life. to your mortal body. This body is mortal. He said, therefore, if Christ be your head, then he will bring what? Life. It will bring life to every dead potential in your body. That is where the problem is. That is where the problem is. Many Christians do not have Christ as their head. The church of God doesn't have Christ as his head. And that is why you see a lot of trouble in the church today. That's why you see 
the sickness of the Gentiles affecting the, the children of God. That's why you see disease and a lot of problem that is affecting the world is affecting the church. Because the, the, the church does not have head as Christ. Yes, continue. Through his spirit who dwells in you. Uh huh. To 14, we are going. Therefore, brethren, yes. we are debtors not to the flesh, uh -huh. but, to live according to the but to live according to the flesh. Uh -huh. For if you live according to the flesh, if you live, if you are a headless body, yes, you will die. Whenever you see, if you live according to the flesh, which means if, I, if you are a body, you don't have head, you are a headless body, you say that is dead. I said that today. When you don't have head, you are dead. Yes? But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. He said, but if you have Christ, which is your head, you will live. That is 1 John 5, 2 have said that also. Yes? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. But as many as have the head, Christ as their head. Yes? These are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. Though. Those that have Christ as their head, they are the only... See, anybody can call himself child of God. I can call myself man of God. Anybody can say, oh, God spoke to me, he said, son. Anybody can say that. It's easy for us to speak about ourselves. But does God call you a son? Does God know you that you're a child of God? A lot of people say, God is my father. And God said, I'm not your father. God said it to some people in Israel. He said, go to your wood and your stick that you call father. And the Lord recognize you as what? As father. Because it's only those that are led that have head. Christ as their head. Led by the spirit. See, being led is not just hearing. I have said this several times. Some people think when you say you are led by the spirit, it's when you just hear the Holy Spirit speaking. Or when you can speak in tongue. That's not being led by the spirit. Being led if you check the mini dictionary meaning of lead, it means you are given instruction to follow and you follow the instruction. That's where you are led. But if you receive instruction and you don't follow the instruction, are you led? You are not led. You all receive information. Many Christians have information about heaven, about God, about Jesus, but they are not using it. And therefore, they are not what? They are not led. And if they are not led by God, they are what? They are headless body. They are what? Amen. Tell somebody beside you who who is leading you? Who is leading you? Because it's your leg that directs your body, isn't it? When you are traveling, when you are going somewhere, even when you leave from your living room to your bathroom, your your kitchen, if you have a functioning head, it will bring you. It will bring you to anywhere you are going. But when you don't have head, you don't have sight, eyesight, and everybody, the whole part of the body is dead. So, maybe you are one of the people that are beginning to wonder what is happening to the church of God nowadays. Why are pastors behaving like this? Why is members behaving like this? Why are we fighting ourselves? Why is this message A different from message B? Why is this one preaching this one, another one is against the, uh, what is preaching? It is because we don't have the same head. Many pastors have their headless bodies. Headless pastors. A lot of evangelists are headless evangelists. A lot of bishops are what? Headless bishops. A lot of pastors are what? Headless pastors. Even though they speak in tongues. But they are not led by the Spirit. It is only when you receive information from the Spirit of God as your head. And you carry it out in, a, in, 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 in assignment. That is when you are led by the Spirit of God. Let us read the last one before we go. I go to the summary of the message. Uh, Proverbs 6, 12 to 16. Proverbs 6. 12 to 16. That is our last, probably the last uh, Bible today to read. I told you that I'm going to maintain it as a message. Because it was given to me as a message to speak to the church and to everyone. And after this, I will go to summary and I will leave you to make decision as to whether you want to have a head or you want to continue to go the way you have been going. Pro, uh, sorry, Romans I meant. Romans, not Proverbs. Romans Thank you, my brother, there, that you are, you are picking up another assignment for yourself. You are helping. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 6, 12 to 16. Romans 6, 12 to 16. Yes. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Now, look at it. How 
the apostles started saying this. He said, therefore, do not let what? Sin, Sin reign in your mortal body. body. Yes? That you should obey it in that, its loss. Yes, continue. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to Listen. sin. Look at that. It said, do not present your members. What is your members? Your hand, your body, your leg, your eyes, your ears. Do not present them as the instrument of what? Unrighteousness. Yes, continue. As being alive from the dead. Yes. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Yes. For sin shall not have dominion over you. He says, look at step by step. I love the way Apostle Paul presents anything that he wrote. Step by step. Look, I start by telling us what we should do and what we should not do. But you will not get to the part that how people do that. And what happened to you when you do that? Now, here, can you read that part again? For sin shall not have dominion over you. He says, sin shall not have dominion. In other words, sin will not control your life. You will not commit sin, yes? For you are not under law. Because you are no longer under law. But under grace. Under the grace. Mm-hmm. Now, hold on. I have some people saying, preaching, that because we are saved by grace and not by works, not by law, therefore, we are... God has forgiven our sin of today, tomorrow, and forever. Apostle Paul is saying that is not the case. Eh? That's not what? That is not the case. So even by not, by not being delivered by the law, it shows that you should not commit sin. Because you are saved by grace, does not mean you have to continue to live in sin. Law is not eradicated by the death of Jesus. Look at what law did. Lord just became it was no longer because it was not it was not the best way to get to God. It was not what? The best way Let me give you a serious uh, uh, comparison. Now, if I am a Christian father, I'm a, I'm a pastor, then I tell my children that do they are not born again yet. Then I tell them, please don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't go to party. Don't do this. Don't smoke. Don't you know, I tell them many laws. You see that many of them will be trying to be good children, but they will still be falling into some of them, isn't it? Yeah. They're trying to please me, but they will be struggling with it. They can't, they can't do all the laws. Sometimes they get, they get frustrated. Say, what kind of father is this? We can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do that. What kind of father is this? We are tired. We are getting choked off in that. We are choked. But all of a sudden, one day, I decided to preach to them Jesus. And they accept Jesus, and they receive the Holy Ghost. Now, after receiving the Holy Ghost, will they struggle with that, my commandment, anymore? No. Eh? No. Now, is that law taken away? My commandment and law, did I remove it? No. I didn't. But they kept it or what? They kept it. You see, that is the way gospel is. The same commandment, they kept it after giving their life to Jesus and receiving the Holy Ghost. Comfort- comfortably. They no longer struggle with it. But before they received the Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they were doing what? They were struggling with it. So that is what Apostle Paul is saying. Your salvation does not mean, because you are receiving salvation free, does not mean you have to live free sin. You don't have to get reckless because you, are, you, you don't pay for salvation. Just as some people, when they don't pay for a book, they throw it away. And they are careless with it. So it's a very simple analogy I've given unto you. The law is there before salvation, but the Lord did not, was not strong enough to save us, to deliver us. And Christ came and died for us. The knowledge of Christ and giving your life to him enables and empowers you to keep the same law without struggle. What does that mean? The, the salvation explains to you the reason for the commandment. But before the salvation came, you don't know the reason. You just see that's what? Do's, don't, that. And that is frustrating. You don't know why something, and you just say, don't touch it. Don't touch it. You will touch it. Because you are not saved. Law has no power to deliver, but salvation in Christ Jesus has power to deliver. Amen. Amen. Yes, continue. 15. 15, verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? He said, what then? Shall we continue to commit sin because we say we are no longer under the law, under the grace? We are now under the grace. 
Certainly not. Certainly not. You cannot continue to sin because you are now being saved by grace. Yes? Do you not know that to whom you obey, you are that one slave? Now we are getting there. We are getting to where Apostle Paul hit the nail on the head. I said, don't you know that you what? That to whom you present yourself slaves to. to anyone that you present, your, anyone that become your head, that is the head again. Because you obey your head, isn't it? Yeah. You submit to your head. The whole part of the body submit to instructions of the head. He says, so, therefore, anyone that you make to become your head, it takes total control of your whole body. Yes, read it again. Do you not know? Don't you know? That to whom you present yourself slaves to obey. Whoever you present yourself to as slave to obey. You are that one slave whom you obey. You are the slave of whom you obey. Whether of sin leading to death. Whether of sin leading to death. Or of obedience leading to righteousness. Or obedience leading to righteousness. So, if I see myself lying, cheating, then... It shows me clearly who my head is, isn't it? I can't call Christ on my head if I'm still committing sin. Because whoever becomes your head is in total control of your body. We read that in the Romans 8 that we saw you just read. He said, if Christ becomes your head, then your body is dead to what? Dead because of sin, isn't it? So if you see your body committing sin, then who is your head? Thank you. I thank God I didn't say that. Our brother said that. So you can easily identify who your head is. So when somebody says, I don't know who is going to heaven, it's only Christ knows who is going to heaven. You know where you are going as a child of God. Or someone that is not a child of God claiming to be a child of God. Don't let us deceive ourselves. God is not mocked. Whoever you obey becomes what? Your head. Because you submit to your head. But like I said in the beginning of this message, it is not too late. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be what? Too late. So there is a need to change masters today. You need to do what? To ask Christ to become your head. And he will be. But you need your cooperation. I will finally read. This is not part of my reading. It's not part, I didn't put it in, the, in my in my jota to speak about. I just it came to my mind as I was speaking. Isaiah chapter 1, 18 to, 9, to 20. Isaiah 1, 18 to 20. Isaiah 1, 18 to 20. Yes. Come now and let us reason together. Come now, let us reason together. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet. If your sins is like scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. They shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson. Even though your sin is red, too red, too deep. You say, no, this is too much for me. Can God deliver somebody like me? He says what? He's ready to wash it away. Yes? They shall be as wool. As wool. If you are willing and obedient. The only thing you must do is to what? You must be willing and obedient. obedient. Yes? You shall eat the good of the land. And you will be fruitful. Yes? But if you refuse to rebel. But if you refuse to say no. I don't agree with this message. You shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Whose mouth said it? The Lord. The mouth of the Lord. So I have delivered a message. Like I told you. It's a message. I always make my, my messages to stop at message. This is what I'm given, And I've given it to the people. It's left up to you now to begin to think. Your going to heaven is in your hands. All what it takes to go to heaven is in your hand. You must take your life a little bit more seriously. You must realize that if you are in Christ, if you are, if claim to be born again, and you see nothing but sin, then Christ is not your head. There are many things we call ourselves that heaven does not recognize with us. And part of it to say, I am body of Christ. In crisis, a body of Christ that commits fornication and adultery is not what? It's not the body of Christ. A body that still fights, engage in striving, uh, warmongering, calling names and, and, and lame callings and all those kind of things is not the body of Christ. 
a body that that commits sin, a body that kills, is not the body of Christ. So you are going to think today that I want to become the body of Christ. I want Christ to be my head. The Bible says when you have Christ as your head, your body is automatically dead to sin. So this is the day that you must make that decision. It's a decision. You have to decide first before God can help you. Some people make mistakes. They say, God, please help me. And after 10 years, they say, I'm still waiting on God to help me. He's not helping me. It's not about God coming to help. It's about you making a decision to change. Then you go to him. Then he helps you. He's willing to help. He wants to help. He has been stretching his hand to help even right before you make your decision. But all you have to do is just say, God, I am willing. That's what the Lord wants. That's the only thing I expect from you. Lord, I am willing. Please have mercy on me. I want you to become my head. I want the whole church of the world to pray this prayer. Ministries, churches, pastors, evangelists, bishops, members, deacons. We must pray to bring Christ down to become our church. I mean our head. So that our body can die because of sin. Because whatever you have as your head, the time is what your body does. If Christ is not your head, definitely it will be the devil. Because that Romans chapter 6, 16 says, whoever you submit yourself to, to obey what? That is your head. That's what your head is. If Christ is your head, your body will be dead to sin. If the devil is your head, your body will be alive to what? To sin. You will sin as if you are just, you are just joking. So I want you to stand up wherever you are right now. I want to give you a bit of time to pray before I close today. And I want you to begin to speak to God. Lord Jesus, you saved and you died for my sin. Complete my work of salvation today by becoming my head. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Lord Jesus, you died for my sin and you saved me. Complete the work of my, work of my salvation by becoming my head. You are my head, oh Lord. Father, take absolute preeminence of my body in the name of Jesus. Father, you are the one that died and you shed your blood for my sake. Complete my work of salvation today by becoming my head. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to say this. Say, my Father and my God. My Father and my God. Take absolute preeminence. Total control of my body, my spirit, my soul, that they may all be going to submit to you effortlessly. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that my body, my spirit, and soul will begin to submit to you from today effortlessly. Father, become my head that I may become your body in the name of Jesus that we all may be united in the Father in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Colossians 3, 1 to 3. He says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things on the earth. For you died, and your life in, is hidden in Christ in God. You died. Your life is hidden. Even though you are living, but you are dead to sin. And because your life is hidden in Christ, in God. Now tell me, if you are living in Christ, in God, 
how can the wicked reach you? No wonder First John in chapter 5, he says, those that are children of God, they keep themselves in verse 18. And the wicked one does not reach them. Is that not what it says? They do not reach them. Because you are hidden in Christ in the, in the Lord. So there is need for you to have the head. It is the head that kills your body to be submissive to, to him. You are going to pray today. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Be my head today. Be my head today. As from today, As from today let my life be submissive to your instruction. Let my life be submissive. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Be my head today. Be my head today. Our Lord, my Father. I am the body. I am supposed to be the body of Christ, Lord. Without sin, living without sin. The Bible says if I make Christ my head, my body will die because of sin. Father, be my head today that my whole body may begin to take instructions and following direction and be corrected by you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, say, in Jesus' name we pray. In that Romans chapter 8 verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the word, by the Spirit of God and the word, the sons, some people will say, it's your sister, it's your sister's daughter, so I'm, I'm exempted. You are not exempted. He says, when he says sons, it means sons, daughter, white or black, America or Asia. You are what? You must be led by his spirit. Because it's only those who are led by the Spirit that are what? That have the head. They have Christ as their head. head. So you are going to pray today. Because I told you before, it is one thing for you to receive instruction. But when the Bible says led, being led means you receive the instruction and you run with it. You didn't just receive instruction, but you receive instruction to begin to do according to his command. That's what makes you what? Someone that is led by God's Spirit. Say, O oh Lord, my Father. O oh Lord, my Father. As from, today, As from today, let me begin to follow your instructions. Let me begin to follow your instructions. Let me be corrected by your word. Let me be, by let me be able to embrace your word. Let me be able to embrace With your word. With joy instead of bitterness. With joy instead of bitterness. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Say, Eba Akan Zaima Akontemburum Bole Maharika. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. As from today, Lord, lead me by your word. Empower me to obey. Empower me to obey. Empower me to obey. Empower me to obey. To be led by your instruction. In the name of Jesus, my Father and my God, empower me to obey. In the name of Jesus, empower me to obey. In the name of Jesus, give me power to receive your word and to travel with it. That be made to make useful of your word. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Oh Lord, my God, my Father, empower me, Lord. Empower my children, my husband, and life. Empower the church, the way of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Follow instruction in the name of Jesus. I want you to sing this song before you pray the next prayer. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, pure and holy, try and true, with us given, as we Prepare me. No, prepare me. Oh, Lord. i Pure and holy. Oh, yeah. Try and do. We thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. How we are living. Oh, sanctuary. Colossians chapter 1, 
Let's see Colossians 1 verses 10 and 11. Colossians 1, 10 and 11, what does it say? Somebody quick. Colossians chapter 10, I mean chapter 1, 10 and 11. Verses 10 and 11. He says, That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him. Look at that. That you may start walking with the Lord, fully pleasing Him. Being fruitful in every good works. Being fruitful in how many works? Every, every good works. And in, in increasing in the knowledge of God. Look at that verse 11. He says, strengthened with all might. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. For all patience and long suffering with joy. Can you see that? He said, empowerment by God. To be what? To be patient and to, be, to endure that you can be full with joy. You are going to ask for power today. Lord, empower me to obey the leading of your Holy Spirit. Empower me to obey instruction and correction. Empower me to receive your messages with joy. See, that up to now, there are some people that hear the message of God and get angry. There are people that are, the Bible called those people the, the people that have made the word of God as war, the word rock of offense. And it's become the word their stumbling block. Instead of receiving gospel, the gospel become what? Rock of offense and stumbling block. So you are going to pray. Lord, empower me, Lord, as from today, to receive your word with gladness and empower me to obey and to follow your direction, instruction, and correction. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Say, Ema Akanzaima Kotemuru Bolima Ali. Ye Ema Akanzaima Kotemuru Bolima. Rahama Jose Kemuru Bolima. Ye Ema Akanzaima Kotemuru Bolima. Father, empower me to strengthen me. Empower me. Strengthen me to obey you. Strengthen me to follow you. Strengthen me to be corrected by you. Strengthen me to receive your word always with joy. Father, to be corrected, to carry your word and to run with it, Lord, for correction, for reproof. Father, in the name of our direction, O oh, Lord, that I may be thoroughly equipped for every good works. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Before we sing the next song, you are going to pray, sing the, I mean, before we pray the next prayer, you're going to sing this song again. Where it lead me high, we follow. Where he leads me, where he leads me high, we follow. Where he leads me, where he leads me high, we follow. I'm going to follow. Father, lead me, Father, lead me. Strength, Lord, Father, give me strength to follow. Father, give me strength. Father, give me strength to follow you and go with you all the way. One more time, give me strength to follow you. Father, give me strength to follow to follow you, Lord, Father. Listen to this prayer point very well. Every father's, every powers of my father's or my mother's house. Every powers of my father and my mother's house. That is tying me to sin through blood. That is tying me to sin through blood. I will repeat that again. Powers from my mother's and my father's house. Powers from my mother and my father's house. That are using the blood of the of the blood of my generation to tie me to sin. That are using the blood of my generation to tie me down. Let me extend that to you because there are prayers that need explanation. How does that happen? So that people will understand, they will not say what kind of prayer is this. 
you see, there are some sins that your parents committed that will be very smooth and very sweet to you. And it will look like you don't because it like inherited sin. There are some sin you, you just you just that became part of your life. But there are some that have to do with the blood. And you you may not be able to deliver yourself from that true repentance except you call on God to help you. And that's why you are calling now. Every power from my father's or mother's house. Every power from my father or my mother's house. Using blood to tie me to sin. Using blood to tie me to sin. The blood of my forefathers. The blood of my forefathers. To tie me to their sins. To tie me to their sins. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Deliver me from the blood of my parents. Deliver me from the blood of my parents. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, deliver me from the blood of my parents. Let the blood of Jesus deliver me from the blood of my parents. Everywhere that the blood of my parents are tied me to. Every sin that the blood of my parents are tied to my life. Blood of Jesus, deliver me from them today. Blood of Jesus, deliver me from them today. Blood of Jesus, deliver me from them today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Name we pray. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Place your right hand in your chest. Say, Oh Lord, my Father. Oh Lord, my Father. Give me a new heart. Give me a new heart. Give me a fresh new heart. Give me a fresh new heart. Give me the heart of flesh. Give me the heart of flesh. And remove the heart of stone from and me. And remove the heart of stone from me. That my life will experience transformation. That my life will experience transformation. That your name may be glorified. That your name may be glorified. Through me. Through me. And to all the world. And to all the Begin world. to pray in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. My Father and my God. Father, give me a new heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus, transform my heart in the name of Jesus. Father, remove the heart of stone, the heart of stubbornness away from me in the name of Jesus. Grant me the heart of flesh, Lord. That, oh Lord, that we enhance my transformation, supernatural transformation, that your name may be glorified through the whole world in the name of Jesus. La ama koze kebo boro bole mahali. Ye ema akan zaima kote boro bole mahali. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. God will do it again. For he has done it before. He reigns from heaven. He will do all the things that we do. Give glory to this Lord for the moment of joy has come. Sing hallelujah. My God will do it again. God will do it again. God will do it again. For he has done it before. He reigned from heaven. He will do all his things. He will do. Give glory to the Lord for the moment of God has come. He has done it. He will do it again. Hallelujah. He will do it. Jesus has done it again. He will do it. He will do it. He has done it. He has done it again. Hallelujah. He will do it. My God will do it again. Now I want you to speak to God yourself. Just in two to three minutes. That thing that is bothering your mind, that request, that thing you want to ask God, you want to speak to God for, I want you to begin to say it now. Because whatever it is, you are going to come for testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now begin to speak to God. Begin to speak to Him. Begin to speak to Him. Begin to speak to Him. The Lord that hears you in the secret places, He will also answer you publicly. In the name of Jesus, begin to speak to him. 
Begin to ask him what you want, you want him to do. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We thank you because your, me your word has been delivered in message to your children. To question and query themselves who their head is. If Christ indeed is indeed our head, our body will be dead because of sin. If Christ indeed is our head, the church will become one. Even in our diversity, will be found to be one united body in Christ. Lord, I pray. Because of your death, Lord. Because of the blood that was shed at Calvary. Because of your death, oh Lord. Let the body of Christ worldwide be united. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Amen. I come against every spirit of disunity. I come against every spirit of division. I come against every spirit of segregation, religious practices, self-seeking. The Bible says wherever there is envy and self-seeking, there will be a lot of trouble and, and division. Lord, I pray that you bring your church together. Lord, I pray that we'll be united in one body, even in our diversity. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. I start from the church, the way of Christ evangelical ministry, Lord. Let us be united, Lord. In beliefs, in thoughts, in imagination. Father, unite us, O oh Lord. Let our minds be united. Let our spirit be united. Let our bodies be united. Let our faith be united. Amen. Let our beliefs be united. Amen. Let our goals be united. Amen. Let our purposes be united. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Nazareth, Amen. Lord. Amen. Christ Jesus, you are the head of all principalities and powers, kingdoms and authority. The Bible says it is pleasing unto the Father that you become the head that the whole world might be unified under you as a body. My God and my Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you unite every Christian body and you make yourself our body, Lord, our head, Lord, that we can become your body, unified under you. In the name of Jesus, Nazareth, Father. Amen. Father, the part, the body parts do not struggle to obey instruction of the head. Lord, as from today, we pray that our bodies, our parts, the body parts, we obey your instructions, we submit to you effortlessly. Empower us to do so. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Amen. Every forces of darkness occupying God's space 
in the place of head in our body. I command them to depart now. I command the kingdom of darkness to crumble. Amen. I command the kingdom of the enemy and our life to destroy. Amen. I command every accuser and every spirit of darkness occupying God's space in our life be removed today. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. I command the kingdom of darkness to crumble. I command the throne of the ungodly to be destroyed. I command the power of God to condemn and destroy every space that the enemy is occupying in your lives. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Come and take your place alone. Sing it out. Come and take your place alone. In my life. He is your head. Is your head? He must take his face today in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, come and take your place. Come and take your place, Lord. Come and take your place. 